please raise your hand or unmute yourself and talk of any inaccuracies that they wish to have corrected on those minutes. Can I just say, um, Rachel Lewis contacted me. Uh, she's down as a visitor um, and she is in fact, should be under the laity. I think she's now the representative. Um, right, so we'll get that corrected. Escapes me. So that's that's the only thing that I've had picked out for me. So. And are there any other inaccuracies that you're aware of? Uh, anybody? In terms of matters arising, um, the presentation by uh, the Reverend Penny Pud, stop talking, start doing, is an item under the deanery plan. And so the time to question that or discuss it will be after she's addressed us on the deanery plan. And the same with the Ikea church. Uh, if there are any other matters arising, please raise them at the end under any other business if you feel they haven't been adequately covered um, during those two discussions. Um, so that moves us on to item five, the introduction of Kate Poynton. Um, and I'd just like to give Kate a chance to introduce herself. She's um, we're thrilled to have her, uh, and we see her role expanding into being more part of the team and, and coordinating what is going on in mission and, and, and really being less of a secretary and more part of the leadership team. But Kate, if you've got any words to say, particularly about the database, please, please do so now. Um, well, hello, everybody. <laughs> I have no idea who everybody is, just who somebody is, but I'll learn it eventually. Um, uh, I think the database is quite good. There are a few uh, things, uh, the missing fine details, but we'll come across them as we get there. Um, and I started on the 1st of January and um, hope that eventually I'll get the hang of this. <laughs> so, um, I have a history of nursing, which doesn't help at all with taking minutes, so bear with me. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Kate. And the more support you can give her, one of the problems we've had at the moment is a lot of people have said they don't wish uh, their details to be used for communicating with them by ticking the wrong box on forms. And obviously we need to send you minutes and tell you where meetings are and communicate with you. So when she gets on to you and asks you to put it right, could you please yeah, help her? Thank and, you. And, uh, frankly, if we can't compete to someone who is a synod representative or a church warden or a treasurer, uh, because they say they don't want to be communicated with, then in many ways, they're not much help to us. And they ought to really seriously considering uh, uh, changing changing their, their settings and allowing us to communicate with yes, them. Yes, and I think also most people are putting what their role is and where they're from, which is very helpful. So if the first few emails that you might have to send me, if you could just add that to the bottom, um, I'd be very grateful. Thank you very much, Kate. Uh, moves us, and this is great. We've gone through terribly quickly and now we've got the slightly slower bit. Um, Mark, would you be able to introduce, please, for us the uh, item on the deanery plan? Yes, thank you very much, Patrick, um, and uh, thank you for your uh, for your um, uh, praise earlier in the meeting. It's much appreciated. Um, yes, folks. Um, obviously, um, when I had the rural deans hat on, one of the challenges that we knew was coming was going to be that um, how we're going to pay for the clergy we've got, and also the fact that as a diocesan strategy, we were going to be losing. Um, clergy um, as well. So we were we were facing um, a, a two pronged attack. And over the last couple of years, um, out of the chapter, that's the clergy um, chapter, um, and a uh, uh, some subgroup a subgroup has formed with some lay help to look at options that are opening up um, and uh, looking at different models and roles that the deanery could play. Um, this we are not alone in this, and I'm sure you're uh, very um, familiar with some of the things that have been happening in Abidor Deanery and their plan and their uh, way forward. They've um, now published that. It has gone to the, uh, the 
um, Archdeacon Remission and Pastoral Committee and being accepted as a working document. Um, and it took that it took them three years to get where they are. So again, we've we've not expected things to happen quickly, but we are expecting things to be happening thoroughly, so that we're taking into account and juggling all the different criteria, all the different factors, all the different pushes and pulls um, for having a ministry across this deanery, which consists of um, the 38 parishes, um, Ross. Uh, town, which has somewhere around half of the population of the deanery um, and is a major market town. And then the other rural parishes and the um, variations in uh, population, church attendance, etc. But we've also, in parallel with that, we've been trying to run some practical things because actually, um, as Penny pointed out before, it's also about doing things. So we've been looking at deanery initiatives, things that we can do as a deanery to support one another and to um, help each other in a way that doesn't diminish the role of the parish. We're not about abolishing parishes. What we're about is helping people cooperate across parish boundaries with gifts and talents that they've got that they can share and work perhaps with a geographically close parish or perhaps a parish which is a very similar worship style um, and maybe um, help them um, to learn from what you've done that's been successful or for you to learn from them. This is also a very much an information exchange. It's about taking what's happening that is working really well and helping to spread the good practice across our, our deanery. We have struggled with, and we continue to struggle, I have to say, with people just looking as far as their own parish boundaries. And that's not a sustainable model for us as a deanery or for the benefices across this deanery. So we're trying to uh, find ways and means in which we can work together to share um, expertise, to help parishes as they, as, as they grow and develop and meet the challenges. So um, a number of things that have been coming up particularly um, are around eco church and around the strength of, of, of parishes about parishes looking at what their future might be, about whether they're thinking that they would go down the route of um, uh, festival churches, um, where ro worship rotors, um, all of those kind of factors are coming into play. And um, we're asking you to think seriously about where you think your parish is and how it can develop. So we've been gathering statistics and we've been gathering information. We've been bringing all that together um, and I guess um, I'm going to hand over to Penny and to Tim, because they're the ones who've really been kind of driving both the practical um, side of things and the information side. So Penny or Tim, whoever is first up, um, I'll hand over to you. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm uh, Tim, and it's lovely to see some of you on my screen. I'm just going to share a slide with you that I hope is now appearing on your screen. Um, Penny and I uh, have spoken and uh, we were just going to update you. At our December meeting, we spent a long time talking around how we could start working together. So our, the idea this evening is not to spend too much time on it, but just to give you an update. And the way I think I'm speaking on Penny's behalf, but um, I, I think the way we saw it is the subcommittee was looking at ways to make things happen across the deanery. Um, so starting to say, actually, if we did things together, we could draw the deanery together and we could start saving time and energy for the different churches um, within, within the deanery. We don't see this as the strategy. We don't see this as where, where we're gonna end up. This is starting to make things happen as we formulate the strategy. So I'm speaking on behalf of Penny. Penny will chip in um, in, in a few minutes. So the first thing we wanted to let you know about, and we hope you already know about this, is that from, uh, I think it was the first day after our last deanery meeting, we launched our deanery prayer diary. I think we'll all, all admit, uh, understand that prayer is at the heart of what we do. And what we wanted to do as a deanery is start putting time aside to pray. So Mark, bless him, spent some considerable time doing this. And each month a diary comes out 
Um, and it's each day and there's a thought, there's a scripture, there's a prayer and there's something to pray for across our deanery. So we're trying to anchor it in what's going on. And so if you want a copy of this, it's available from your incumbents. So please badger them and please make sure that as many people as possible know about this. Now we've got Kate starting. Kate's going to be contacting PCC secretaries. And so each month we're going to include what's going on across the parishes. So that was the first thing that we wanted to remind you that has started. It also pops up if you're a Facebook user at eight o'clock on Facebook, if you're linked into the Ross and Archingfield Deanery page. So if you want that to pop into your phone or tablet when you're eating your Frosties or your toast at eight o'clock in the morning, that's the place to be. So it's the Ross and Arkhamfield Deanery page on the Facebook, on Facebook. We also have a Deanery prayer, which is part of the, the prayer diary. And again, I'd be encouraging each of us to pray this each day as we think and, and pray about our Deanery. I'm going to move on. Last time we talked about giving and trying to make money in a difficult time. And we talked about two things. We talked about um, contactless giving and we talked about text giving. And out of the meeting in December, two papers came out. And I know a number of churches have begun the process. Um, I was speaking to Kate this morning and Kate it was very excited in Dixton that their machine has now arrived and it is working well. But what stood out for me is I bumped into so many people in Morrison's and at different meetings who said, you're Tim, can you help us? So on the screen, you've got my email address and my mobile number. Please give me a ring if you've got some silly questions or want to understand more, because we want to help you to get these things in your churches so that hopefully you can make money from walkers, from occasional offices, weddings and baptisms, as we start doing those services. Now, one of the things that Jill Wiley, who's the administrator and church warden um, at Peterstow has been doing for us is a survey. Um, bless her, Jill created with a sub team, a survey that went out in, last October to all the churches. Now, the idea is that when we come to put together our deanery plan, we want it to reflect what's going on at the ground level and so firstly I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has sent in that information. Jill and I have spent hours poring over it and have started to pull together some interesting data that is telling us. We're slightly stuck at the moment because I think we're waiting on three final parishes that our, low, uh, our lay co-chair is going to be badgering um, hopefully for us but we would love to get that complete picture because we think it will kind of surprise us in terms of what it's telling us. But hopefully the new rural dean will be able to take that on and we can come back to you in the next uh, synod gathering and tell you what, what some of the data <coughs> told us. Um, one of the things that we want to do, and actually we tried to do, I think it was in January and February and um, unfortunately lockdown three got in the way, but we're not gonna be defeated. We're valiantly coming back strong in March is to produce a DVD and a leaflet, which talks about the importance of the deanery in supporting local churches. So we have a film guy coming in on the 16th of March, giving his time free to help us construct that DVD, and then there'll be good quality leaflets. So again, it's another resource to help us remember that we are part of something bigger than our parishes, bigger than our benefits, we are part of a deanery that wants to support and encourage us. Um, and then we were going to talk about the welcome pack, but I think Penny would like to talk about this. If I am. Penny's there. Yes, um, yes we had, we, with all the new homes that are going up in the various parishes, um, we thought it would be quite a good idea to revise the idea of having a welcome pack so that when new people come, into our parishes, we can put one of these in. And it really will be a, a basic information. It will be at the parish level, but we want to uh, make sure that 
the, the, the whole notion of Christianity today is sort of part and parcel of this survival kit. Um, I really do need to know approximately how many new homes are going up. It won't only just be for new homes, it will be if we hear of anybody moving in as well. Um, one of the things we're very conscious of is that probably 95% of the people who live in our parishes don't know an awful lot about us. And so that's the reason why we want to have this welcome pack, so that we start this outreach to more people to make them realise that, that the Church of England in rural areas is not, not just for the over 70s. Um, so it is going to be an intergenerational um, attack, if you like, because many of the new the people who are moving into these new homes are, are, are families with children. So um, I do need to know approximately how many new homes are going up so that we can liaise with Paul Baker, who is going to help us pay for some of this, uh, these packs. That's really all I need to say at the moment. But I think parishes could get on with it. They can start getting information together. Um, it's just the sort of things you need to know when you leave when you uh, arrive in a new place and you think, where's the doctor? Where's the church? Where's, where's the, what schools are available and all this sort of thing. So, um, and I know one parish in particular, one of ours, Whitchurch, uh, their local shop has said, you know, bring, bring something along from um, the survival kit and, and, and well, you can have a free coffee. And I think that sort of thing is, shows how, how uh, you know, welcoming we're going to be. So well done Whitchurch for doing that. That's all I have to say on that for the time being. Thank you, Penny. And that's really the summary from us of where we got to on the subcommittee. I hope these aren't exclusive ideas that you think we've just come up with. We are trying to listen to what people tell us. So if you think there are other things that we could do better or well as a deanery, please do let Kate, um, myself or Penny know, and we will start trying to work with you to develop them so that we kind of, we live out our dream of being a strong um, deanery together. So that's it from me, Patrick. Thank you very much, Tim, and thank you very much, Penny. Now, uh, at this point, um, are there any questions for uh, Tim and Penny? And, and I would, just before we open it up to questions. And if you want a question, please put your raised hand thing up and we'll try and spot it. Um, we need to discuss this. There are big changes coming to the way we worship and the manner we worship. And we want to make something that is comfortable and works well for everyone. And we want to make something that brings Jesus and God to as many people in this area of Ross and Arkham Field as possible in a form that they can relate to. And we want to grow a whole new generation of disciples that will continue to bring God and Jesus to Ross and Arkham Field long after all of us are all gone. Um, now I said we need to discuss it. Questions now would be terrific and discussion now, but even more important, take this back to your PCCs as their representatives. Tell them that change is afoot. Tell them that now, before it's very far developed, is the time to alter the course of the ship. Uh, if they wait until things start happening in six months' time, it may be too late or it may be much harder for their views to be made heard. Um, the next meeting's on the 14th of July. By then, there'll be a new rural dean, I hope, and um, the plan will be that much further along the line. So your, your PCC input is tremendously important now. Anyway, are, are there any points people wish to make um, at the moment? I can't see any raised hands. No one, no one particularly, very, very, very quiet. I imagine that means that Tim and Penny have done such a good job of telling you, uh, updating you on the previous ones. We'll move on. If you have got some questions, um, do bring them up under any other business if, you, if you've thought of them by then. And when you're taking back to the parishes, remember that um, as well as taking back the minutes of this meeting, which will be their update, take back the minutes of the last meeting, which has got the full discussion we had at great length. Um, moving on, the next item is a, an update on eco-church. 
Um, and we've got the same well, two speakers again. Right, can okay. I, I'm going to so, sh uh, share a screen, so I hope this is going to work. Oh, I always get this. Here we go. Come on. Oh, help me somebody. <laughs> it's supposed to be a PowerPoint coming up. <laughs> It, it, it may be that, that, that um, Mark's got to give you permission. Oh, Mark, can you give me permission, please? You, ha you should have it. It's, uh, it's um, multiple participants can share. Yeah. Oh. It's not coming up, share. Hang there on. we go. Let's try. Hang on. Ah, oh, there we go. <coughs> right. Okay. From the so what's going to happen is that... Um, uh, Tim, uh, uh, Paul is going to talk first, uh, and then um, I'll take over. But uh, and I'll just sort this out. Yep, okay, there we go. go. Eco matters, Ross and Arkenfield. Well, I would add that Penny and I are passionate about this, and I hope that you are also. And if you aren't, you haven't won the game. So, first of all, why does it matter? Well. Um, uh, I'll start with a quote from Genesis 1, the passage, God spoke, let us make human beings in our image, so that they can be responsible to the fish in the sea, the birds in the air, and the cattle. Then God said, I have given you every sort of seed bearing plant on earth, and every kind of fruit bearing tree. Also all animals and all birds, and everything that moves and breathes, I give you whatever grows out of the ground for food. And there it was. So there we have it. God created everything, gave it to us humans to care for. The question is, are we living up to the responsibility that God gave us? Well, so what... Well, first of all, uh, we got in touch with the diocese because uh, Chrissy Pepler and Mary Oxley uh, are sort of driving this from a, di a diocesan point of view. And since Eco Church started, uh, the initiatives have launched sort of 45. And I would say that registering is not difficult. It's quite easy. And actually, you can probably do it in just about over an hour or so. And it, the questions that are asked does actually stimulate you to think of various things. So download the course. registered. You can work towards various levels. And nine parishes, including St. Wanards, have achieved bronze, four silver, and the cathedral, uh, which includes the cathedral itself. Um, and that was actually the thousands part of the whole project. Um, we have 38 churches within the, the Ross and Arkenfield. We will go up to 40. That uh, currently means we are about 9.4% 9, 9 of our diocese, which would move to 10% for the next for two. Um, so it is significant. Um, but, uh, actually, whilst I mentioned registering, uh, Christy and Mary would like to know the contact people for the churches that are already registered because one of the problems is is that you can pull up the church names but if you want to contact the people uh, you, it doesn't say that and so that is very also wish to know that so we can follow that up um, very positive way of getting things going is to place the eco church on your next PCC agenda. It's nothing like having a champion. They don't have to be an office holder. They need to be somebody that's enthusiastic on your PCC. So we do ask you, and I would actually have it as an ongoing item at each meeting to update where we are, because there is a degree of urgency as you'll see that we need to do something uh, to do that. Actually committed as a diocese to move towards net zero carbon by 
which is not far off. So the, we need to get people committed and start work now. Um, and with references to the above, the parishes are encouraged to fill in a carbon footprint tool for the parish. This is a good way of tracking from a deanery and from a diocese how we are actually progressing towards this zero level for the um, 2030 target. And as I say, that is rapidly uh, coming about. Plan itself is going to take a while to roll out to fruition and probably be an ongoing thing anyway. Um, so what can we do in terms of following that up, if we can go on to the next slide, Penny. Yep. What that's been happening, um, there was an eco-church, uh, I actually attended, it was a, and it was really a lot of information on that. And if you want to know further information, you right. Um, there is an organization that's been set up called MSET, which starts, stands for March's Christmas Communication Group, which they meet fairly regularly. And they and I would urge you to have a look. You need to register for it. 730, valuing your churchyard. It isn't just a churchyard, we have vicarage gardens, we have lots of things which we can get schools involved in because we need to think of the future generations. It's excellent learning about nature, um, about systems, etc. So we do need to capture the children's imagination. And it's amazing having worked with children, how they actually inspire us. They see somehow things afresh that we see as commonplace. If you look at it through children's eyes, it's just amazing what comes out of nature. And they ask the most innocent questions that the bravest professor might have difficulty in answering. So why don't we tap into that resource? Um, there's a national church website for a lot more information, particularly on buildings. Uh, we can make our churches uh, more user friendly and get heritage and uh, the Victorian society to agree. Solar panels are a way forward to generate a scheme, uh, all ways of reducing that. Uh, I'm not suggesting press-ups during services to keep warm, um, but you know, there are ways in which we can use public spaces um, and make them more efficient and one of the advantages of doing the eco, it, it involves people within the community. If it's done through education as well, you're getting people who are on the fringes of church. And as we've seen with our um, Zoomed service, which out of interest, we need to draw them into this and make them feel responsible again for that. Uh, so these are the, the various, the MCENT, uh, has regular communications, a wealth of information. So there's a lot there. And really, Penny and I, what we will do is you support you. We can't do it. You have to find those people, the critical mass, and to drive this forward. I would end with a rather somber note. If you see what and watch what, what David Attenborough has to say about the seriousness of things, we need to act now. We think of our children and perhaps their children or grandchildren. You realize that if we don't do something now, those grandchildren because of climate change. I have recently had to spend a lot of money to protect my house from water. Why? Because each year we get heavier a sign of things to come. I've had to act now. If we do not act, the consequences are our, our grandchildren, the ages we are, because we may have forest fires, we could possibly, forest the dean could catch enough and someone is stupid enough to start it, we might have uh, crop failures. Um, Patrick, you might agree with this. 
if we don't have sufficient rain. Uh, sometimes it's too much, sometimes it's not enough. But this is the way the world is changing. And we, as we said from Genesis, quote, responsible for the world. So we have to act now. But after that somber note, our who will be talking more about the strands of Eco Church. But I hope that you find this interesting and motivational because I think individually we are responsible. Collectively, we can do a huge amount of good throughout the deanery and the but you, Penny. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, I, I, this getting your church, the eco church, is a big project and it's one which it can be inspiring for so many people. It, it's a, an awfully good way to, to involve uh, families and because there's something in it for everybody. Um, and there are two main strands of interest care for God's earth, which is really what Paul has been talking a, a large amount about. Um, and certainly in any surveys that we've done, um, it would appear that some sort of eco, uh, uh, the, the response by the church to, to eco matters is incredibly important. And, and we, we need to be seen to be speaking about this. And then the other strand is that sustainable care of our buildings. Um, and the two are not mutually exclusive, but you could be regarding as being at the end of the spectrum. You get some people who are what friends of your church, who are very interested in sustainable care and looking after your buildings, or get them to have a look at that bit of it. The Eco Church project itself is a very good way for a parish to start thinking about matters. And, and this, you just register, and then the survey takes you through five areas of church life. And it's quite a comprehensive survey, um, but it, it doesn't require um, a great deal of skill. It just requires somebody to have a really good look and probably more than one person working together. And it takes you through worship and teaching, management of the building, the management of your church land, um, community and global engagement and lifestyle. So as you can see, See, there's something there for everybody. And again, it's a matter of stop talking and start doing. Uh, it would be gr absolutely great if we had all 38 um, parishes in this deanery with the two uh, plus two more um, getting involved in this and all getting registered so that we could have a real deanery impact on this matter of, of Eco Church. And then. Um, bit more about it um, as I say it takes into account your, your whether your church has got buildings or land etc um, this uh, PowerPoint will be made available by Kate you'll see that Paul and I have put on quite a lot of links um, and we're very conscious that you can't write all these down right at the moment um, but we felt that if we put all these links down then it would be quite useful for people to follow them up without having to ask us but please do, as Paul said, do get in touch with us if you want to um, any more information. Now, involving young Christians, this is a this is quite new. This is the Young Christian Climate Network, and um, again, this is notice the age, eighteen to thirty year olds, um, and they they they've got a web page. They're very conscious they're, they're launching um, themselves as a group uh, at the beginning of August um, but they're very in, very much involved with talking about and thinking about the UN climate change conference which is happening in Glasgow uh, in, in November um, they are concerned about climate justice um, and I feel they, they talk a lot about the, the impact of global warming on those who've already suffering. Um, yesterday, on Friday, we had um, the Women's World Day of Prayer and it was all about Vanuatu this year. And in, in Vanuatu, although they're not quite as desperate as some of the other specific, the Pacific states, it's, they, they could be flooded a lot with, with, uh, as sea levels rise. And yet they do nothing to, 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 to pollute or whatever. 
Um, so this is something that you could perhaps talk to schools about, talk to youth clubs about, just talk about among your, you know, your grandchildren, your children, and, and say there is a young Christian climate network and you could get involved in that. Now the next slide, they put up, I'm not going to go through with you, but they, they put up quite a lot of references to for things to read, words for a dying planet, God doesn't do waste, etc. So there's a lot of references there that somebody, if you're interested, you could you could follow those up. Um, and they also have a very modern aspect, and you could listen to some podcasts as well. Um, so you know there again what to look for. So I'm not going to. Then the next one is um, we've we've been talking very much about um, doing things as a deanery. So uh, I'm doing something rather than just sitting and talking about it. I shall be leading a Zoom session discussions uh, starting on Wednesday the 17th of March, uh, half past seven, and there'll be five sessions altogether, uh, weekly sessions. The first on the environment, then global warming and climate change. The Anthropocene era, that's just human beings. And then facing up to the facts and then uh, and then loving your neighbour. So again, um, if people are interested, I will, via Kate, put out the Zoom link for that. I would like it very much if you could get in touch beforehand so I could send you um, a, a leaflet, um, again, email you a leaflet, so that uh, we could talk, uh, it would be something to talk through. But that's going to start the day after we're having a treasurer's meeting, so the 17th of March, at half past seven uh, for five weeks. Okay, that's enough. Thank you. Thank you very, very much indeed, Paul. And um, yeah, yeah. I, I see that I've actually got another meeting at, at seven o'clock that day, but what a, a super series of meetings, and I shall definitely be encouraging my daughter, who's passionate about it, to attend. Are there any questions for um, uh, Penny and Paul? Verity. Verity, can you unmute? Hello. Unmute. Uh, right, I've heard these sort of arguments for Eco Church before. I would like to know what do you think that most of the, the rural churches that we represent are, are doing in terms what, what are we wasting? I think Eco Church is a gimmick. Um, I, I think we have, a, we have an oil fired boiler at Howe Capel and we have to keep the place warm. Um, I'm not aware we have uh, power switches, we have uh, safety uh, turns off so that if people leave them on by mistake, they turn, they turn off automatically. I'm not aware of any resources in any serious way. I th and I would say that all of the people who are involved in cleaning our church and running our church are all responsible citizens. And I would be amazed if they are being wasteful with anything. Um, I, I will certainly bring this up. I'll put it on the, the agenda for our next PCC meeting as I am um, the, the PCC secretary as well as a church warden, but it won't be led by me because I, I guess that most of the people on this screen have got plenty of things to do apart from trying to, uh, you, you know, get into eco church. Yes, I'm aware that all the young people are interested. And yes, I think we all know about the problems of the planet and we don't want, and, uh, and global warming. I don't think we need to, to be told about it. So yeah, Ver that's Verity, my comment. Can I uh, just feel answering this? Uh, because it's a really good point you make up and one that will be shared by many people. And the building, if you're in a listed building, which High Capel is, um, is probably not going to be the issue because you're not allowed to do very much with it and the opportunities are few. But if you go on to the surveys, you will see that there is so much more. And it's about um, how, how often does your incumbent preach about the environment and about our responsibility for the environment. Um, OK, you're not the incumbent, but it's something that, that we all need to start thinking about. And you fill in the form, and that is one of the questions. And many of the other questions are about raising the awareness for the environment. Now, we live in rural South Herefordshire. We are responsible for so much of the environment. 
we see bad things going on in agriculture. We see good things going on in agriculture. We as the Christian community can actively go out and encourage the good things and discourage the bad things. And yes, we can do our best possible for the church. We can buy sustainable electricity. It may be, I, I dare say, not on high cable, but it may be there's a valley roof somewhere. We, you can put up a few solar panels and save a bit of money that way and get excited about doing it, because I would. But actually, it's much more about that piece that, that, that Paul put up from Genesis. It, it's about caring for God's creation. And as Christians and as God worshippers, taking, taking up the responsibility that we've been given. So I don't know if Paul or Penny want to add to that. But, but it's well worth reading the, the, the links they've given you because it will explain it far more lucidly. If I, if I can just follow up from that, Patrick. Yes, I totally agree. Some churches, you've probably done 70, 80, 90 percent of what you're doing. It might be worth survey it may make you look at things slightly differently and how the church is used but i appreciate the point personally i think and this is my view eco church is about eco which is a leading out an education of people and i think we need to be starting now to and the children if we use the land properly and use it as an educational tool parents and in any trying to change any behavior it probably takes up to three generations to do it if we can going that long um it's it's a broader aspect of of preserving and being and that is by everyone really having the mindset of whatever we do to try to protect the planet be it not using plastic being not traveling unnecessary journeys, being turning your heating down a notch or two, or whatever. Um, there are lots of words on a daily basis. I'm not talking necessarily through worship. I'm talking about our daily life. Do less that would save pollution. I mean, we must, the, the lack of travel, aircraft, must have had a significant effect and we've learned of new ways of doing things i do a lot of nhs meetings don't get in a car and drive to birmingham now we do it via zoom how much have we saved by doing that not of our own time but our carbon emissions you know there are lots of things and one of the good things about I think if there is anything about covid it's made it's forced us at doing things differently and all part of saving the planet. It's not just the church building, it's everything that's involved within our faith for protecting the planet. Thank you very much, Paul. And um, I, I, do, I do hope that that has, has helped, Verity. Um, I'm going to just commend to you to read through the questions and, and have a think about it. But I'd like to give Paul... Paul Connell a chance, and, and then maybe Penny can come back to him. Paul Connell. Uh, right, thank you. Um, I'm at a serious disadvantage with this discussion because I studied ecology at university. None of this has got anything to do with ecology. It's about environmentalism. Environmentalism has become the established church in, in Britain, as uh, put forward by the media. Um, and it, it, it bears all of the symbols of religion, uh, changing diet, um, d uh, giving things up. It's, it's not Christianity, it's diluting the gospel with pantheism. I am not happy that I have to sit through harvest festivals where a pantheistic message is given out instead of the gospel. Now, many of the things um, that environmentalists uh, are trying to encourage us to do are very good and very useful. Some of them, however, um, are very destructive, particularly when it comes to um, land management that produces less food or makes food more expensive. And ordinary working people in this and Vanuatu have got to eat. 
So I am very cautious about this. Uh, um, I would say that you know, uh, Christianity should not be diluted by pantheistic messages. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Paul, for your comments. Uh, I, I don't know, Penny, if you wish to, to comment on that. I, I, ex I, I would accept uh, Paul's uh, uh, comments. Um, I taught environmental science at uh, uh, A-level for, for a number of years, and, um, and I'd always, I was very conscious of that I was also a Christian, and, and I, I, I think it is important that we don't uh, uh, bow down to other gods and make people think that we are talking about something other than, than the, the fact that we're talking about the, the one planet that God gave us, and that we do need to take care of it. And I think it's time that we actually uh, accepted real responsibility for this. And, and as a Christian church, we've got to love our neighbour and show that we, we have, uh, we, we really do uh, think about things other than making profits, etc. But I think at this point, I know Paul Cummings also wants to have a, it's all the Pauls. Uh, Paul Cummings, what do you want to say? My moment from, uh, from St Paul, I don't know. Um, what what I would question is, and I, I tend to agree with Verity and what she said, um, having struggled in, in a rural parish for, for a number of years, but we talk about the, the strength of the deanery. What I haven't seen from the deanery are any lessons that the 13 parishes that have received awards have achieved. And I think that would be really useful to us to say these are the sorts Sorts of things that you can do by all means carry out surveys and the rest of it but it goes back to where we were last time we met there's a hell of a lot of talking but there's not a great deal of action let's have some ideas on what we need to be doing now that can make a significant difference and what can be done for those quick gains that we can say we're winning um. Penny, I've got lots I could say about that, but would you like to go first? I, I, I again, I just go back to the fact that I think that it, by doing these sort of surveys, the surveys not are not an end in themselves; they're just a means to an end, and and they are a way of perhaps bringing in people and making people think that uh, we are taking responsibility, that it is God's earth, and we are looking to to. Uh, to really cherish it. And, and that reading from Genesis, we were given dominion over everything, but that doesn't mean to say we are allowed to exploit it. And, and I think that uh, if we can, in doing these surveys and perhaps involving the local school, etc., this is the one way in which we can help preach the message that we are looking after God's creation, but we, we do need to know where to start. As I know with a Paul Baker, wants to come in and say anything about that because he certainly uh, carried out a, a survey at, they'll help to do one at Walford. Yeah. Yes, we did start and actually by going through the process does make one think and outside the box comes up with different solutions. I totally agree with uh, Paul Cummings that yes, what 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 I wanted to do, but because of COVID and because of what Chris and Mary Oxley both said, uh, you can look up the churches that have got, got the various awards, but you can't contact the people to see what they did. I think that's our next step: is people who register and from a deanery and a diocese and a Church of England point of view, what people have done and what financial what environment achieved through that financial ones are probably the easiest we put in solar panels and saved on electricity we uh, energy and we found things like that those are the easy wins the longer wins is you said what um paul the other paul saying um uh, you, you know about uh the environment but it is a way of treasuring what we've got and um, we have to produce food efficiently, but you know, if if things go, if the climate change is too much, we're going to run short on the population growth. The Malthus theory comes in, and population growth. Finally, can't produce the food. More and more people 
are less able to protect themselves and poor economic, social economic, are going to suffer it. Love thy neighbor, I think, Penny, is something you're going to say, who is my neighbor? And I think being the world, and we've got to care for those people also who lived in deprived areas with climatic conditions that are not conducive to keeping livestock and growing crops efficiently. And it's a big, if you're getting economies, you're getting politics, you're getting return on investment. Mars, if we don't actually take some action and educate people into value things, not just for our children and their grandchildren and their children in the future, or is that a bit heavy? On very quiet. Can I just say something? Wendy. Is it all right? Um, I mean, I have recently looked at the survey, and as you go through it, it puts on a dial how you're doing. So, I mean, at Christchurch, we found for the worship and the first section, we were already on the bronze bit of that. So it does give you an idea of how you're doing. Um, and then the other thing I think, Paul, that you, you mentioned in November, the um, e ecology um, thing that you mentioned online in November, there are some people on that who actually talk about what they've done in their churches in order mm -hmm. to get the awards. Um, like, well, I think one of them has got a community cafe going uh, with some of the things as well, but they definitely do. Speak about if it, if I could add to that, we, as a result of that conference, there are various people who've offered themselves up to give help and support. I'll get that circulated again with the minutes. So there's another resource there of people and what they've done and how they've done it, uh, which may be helpful, you know, to, to get you thinking, get you motivated. But it is actually making the first step of seriously. We seem Sean to have lost Patrick. Sorry, Sean, you were going to say something. We seem to have lost Patrick. Yes. Thank you. I was just wondering, um, although this is a very riveting um, debate, we have the Archdeacon with us, and I wonder if we might uh, suspend this debate and give Derek some chance to, to speak to us. Derek, do you, you want to... Uh, Come in from a diocesan viewpoint. I mean, there, are, there are two things. I think one is um, I agree entirely with Paul Connell that we must be careful this doesn't deflect us from our primary um, aim, which is to share the good news of Jesus Christ with the wider world. But at the same time, one of the ways in is to create routes by which we can have those conversations. And I would say that young people particularly are rather absent both from our meeting this evening and from our churches, but they're not absent from our wider communities. And if we're gonna be serious about engaging with those under 40, then this is a live issue and we've got to find ways of communicating the gospel in a way that's going to capture their attention. In, and it's hard in our rural areas where we do a lot to care for the environment already, it does feel like another stick to beat us with. And it's not intended to be that. It's really there as a tool to help churches aim for net carbon zero by 2030, but also to feel there's something they can achieve. As has already been pointed out, it's actually quite easy to get your bronze award um, you haven't actually got to do very much, but it reminds people that we have a responsibility as Christians to care for the environment. We can't pick and choose which bits of the gospel message we like and which bits we don't. And in that sense, I would say you can only do your best. No one is asking people to do more than they're capable of, but we can all do a bit. If you think 20 years ago, no one recycled their plastic bottles and their cardboard. It all went into landfill and we didn't do anything about it. And actually it was young people, uh, very often primary schools, that actually put the rest of us to shame by collecting. And those of you who are grandparents will know the shame that you can be put to very easily by your grandchildren over not putting the right thing in the right box. 
and not putting your recycling out. No one now questions that recycling is a good thing. And again, I would just point you to programs like David Attenborough, where you've seen what happens when the plastic gets out of control and gets into the environment. Uh, most of us today have ingested, whether we realize it or not, plastic through our milk, our water, because in the past we've not been careful enough with the environment. And all I say to you is I think this is an important issue and there are strong views on all sides. Um, I think where I would draw um, a distinction is between those who want to deny there's any problem with the climate and those who want to make it their god at the other end. And we've got to find a, a middle ground that accepts that things change. Since I've been here, the centre of Hereford has flooded four times. And the, the height of that water has beaten the record four times. When, the first time it happened, they said it was once in a hundred year event. When it happened um, a couple of weeks ago, we were told now this is the new normal and it will happen two or three times a year. Um, and I think we have to face the fact that our environment is changing. Um, I was reading something at the weekend, which tells us that the Gulf Stream is slowing down. And if it continues to slow down at the rate that it's slowing down at the moment, we'll have a climate that looks something like Canada in 20 years time, which means very warm, hot summers and very cold winters. And it's fundamentally caused by the melting of the polar ice caps, which is changing the currents in our oceans. The problem for us is that may have always happened. We don't know. We weren't there last time things changed dramatically. But what we do know is these often lead to extinction events. And if we, do, if we continue to do nothing, we may be the people who become extinct. And I think for me, that's the worrying thing. We may not feel we can do very much, but the little each one of us can do will make a difference in the bigger picture. So I would encourage you to do as much as you can. But actually, air source heat pumps and solar panels are not, not going to be the answer to most of our churches. But they are an answer to our church schools. They are an answer to some of the other buildings we have. And actually, if we just need to begin to take this issue seriously. So I would just encourage you not to put this debate on hold, but to continue to have it, because there are things all of us can do. Thank you very much, Archdeacon. And apologies for my sudden disappearance. Um, anyway, we're back on. Uh, may I just add in, in answer to the first Paul's uh, thing on, on ecology and in, environment. I am a farmer and my soil has been in continuous arable production for over 50 years. It's a light Ross Selak series sandy loam and it can't stand that sort of continual arable production, particularly with potatoes in the rotation. So I've embarked on uh, regenerative agriculture, which, which is trying to bring the soil back to life. Um, the soil, each teaspoonful of soil should have more microbes in it than there are stars in the skies or humans on the earth. Each nine inch square of soil should contain upwards of 38 earthworms. My arable land has got few microbes per teaspoonful of soil and I'm lucky if I find one worm. Um, it is dead. It grows a crop which feed the people because you put chemicals on it, chemicals that are produced degrading the habitat and which are not really sustainable in a world thing. I've embarked on a program of getting the organic matter back. Already the worm population is coming back and my yields are not degenerating. So it's not as black and white as saying, we've got to feed the world, we must go on farming hard. It's not as, as black and white as saying, we've got to go to somewhere like Net Castle and just turn it all over to wildlife and not bother with food production. In between, there is the real Christian way. You are given a gift, you work it hard for the good of the people, but you work it hard for the good of the environment. And that is what Eco Church is all about. It's about prayerful, responsible management of the resources that God has given us because God charged us to do that. And that goes more fundamentally, that is, about the worship coming out of church. And it's not just about going to church on Sunday, although the worship of God together is extremely important, but it's actually about living the full Christian life and caring for God's creation and God's people in a humble, quiet, 
and penitent way. And that would be my answer as to why we need to take eco church seriously. It's not compulsory, but it's there. There are lots of tools to help you. Within the deanery, we're encouraging you to look at the tools. I commend the, the links that Penny and Paul have given you. They're incredibly simple, and a lot of it is just about getting someone to talk at a Sunday service on the care of the world and what we can do, small steps, each individual, big steps added up in, into a deanery, bigger steps added up into a whole church of, of and the, the Anglican communion. I don't know how many people are in it, but several hundred million, I believe. So uh, that's my take of it. I'm sorry to drop out, and um, I'm sorry if I missed part of the discussion and talked over something that someone else has said. Are, are there any further questions? Uh, if not, I'll, I'll, I'll um, thank um, Paul and Penny very much for putting this together. Commend to you that you actually look at the website. The one I found most useful to read was the one where it invites you to fill in the form and just look at some of the questions. You can scan through them very, very quickly. And you'll see that on the whole, they're terribly easy and simple and clearly expressed. Um, which brings us on to the last item on the agenda, which is any other business. And Kate, had, please advise of any points you wish to raise. Of course, um, we will take any points you wish to raise. Uh, it's always nice to know in advance. Well, the one question we did get in advance was from Liz Miles about what are the deanery plans for welcome packs. And I think, Liz, um, and I hope that you'll be happy that Penny Padrill has already answered that, but we may have misunderstood the question. No, Patrick, thank you. That, that's fine. Um, she did, and I had a discussion with her earlier on in the day. My only uh, remaining question really is what time scale um, we're putting, <coughs> excuse me, we're putting on this because um, RPCC has had a, a draft pack um, ready for some time now because we feel it's very urgent that how Houses are going up as we speak. Well, actually, they've stopped work for the evening, but you know what I mean. And um, people are about to move in. Uh, and as you say, um, houses are changing hands all the time. And we feel it's a matter of urgency. Um, and it just seems that perhaps it, this is a future plan for the deanery and not an immediate one. Um, it, it, my answer to that. That is that we are considering it, chapter are considering it, the Deanery Mission and Pastoral Committee are, uh, are, are considering it, how best we can do it and how best we can get them into the hands of parishes to give out. Uh, and it did something we're very positive about. Uh, I think it's terribly important to, to, to give people a tangible symbol of welcome. Um, I, I don't know, well, Penny, if you Paul want to add anything. To say so, but I, I just, I did have a conversation with Liz earlier in the day, and I feel that Whitchurch um, and Why Reaches generally will probably just get on with this um, until we've got got a deanery uh, pack, uh, which will be parish based. It's, it's just that it, we want to show support from the deanery, but we are going to go ahead and get this out, out as fast as possible. And Paul, wants um, to it's really that. under any other business not Paul to do with that, but if if we finish that topic, uh, which you referred to at the beginning of the meeting. Absolutely. Liz, are you, are you happy with the answer? <clears throat> yes, I think Penny summed it up, really, that uh, we see it as a matter of urgency and we're probably not, not in a position to wait. Um, but it, it, obviously we will in, incorporate deanery um, material uh, and, and indeed diocesan material as well, but it has to be locally based and uh, local yeah. information. And thank you very much. And thank you for your enthusiasm. Um, Paul, you had a point. A week today, seven o'clock, not 7.30, we have a PCC treasurer's uh, Zoom gathering. Um, if, uh, I, in a way, it's a bit like Kate's situation. There are 38 churches, I have, what, 37 PCCs. I don't think I've had the pleasure of seeing me, if you can call it that. I haven't of them. It's an opportunity, really, for just an hour of the maximum 
to share experiences during this extraordinary time against a very different and of what the concerns and how people got on. We, we were talking about collaborative working earlier. Mark was referring, we need to share our skills. I'm sure out there between the collection of PCC treasurers we've got, if people can't do something, someone else can able to help each other. Uh, we obviously will be able to talk, we need to talk about finance. And I don't want to feel that treasurers are going to be bashed over the head yet again to get more blood out of the stone. We know how difficult it is. We, we could five stipendary ministers, let alone six. So we are in dire straits from that point of view. But it's really collectively as a body of a treasurers how we can actually help. And on the back of this, and I think is, is definitely one of the major ways forward. Richard Jones has... Unfortunately, he's going back to the States, not for him, but he's hopefully getting married. He's going to be leaving us before long, either this month. But he's come along with his two colleagues and we've sort of, he's got to launch. Uh, Parish Giving goes digital. And this is another way now of how to spread the message of, of in the future we can use eco-church to become more economic and save things. But longer term, it's about more people giving more of what they can afford to give. And it is very difficult. It, uh, Dane, the ministry and mission, uh, we, it's the engine oil that keeps our Christianity going. Laity need the confidence to do things, but they need the support and the training to do it. And no doubt with long interregnums, Laity are going to have to play a bigger and bigger part, but they need the confidence, they need the guidance, and it is important. All this does cost money. Um, but the purpose of the meeting then is really to, um, it's a first gathering of PCC treasurers. I thought the last, uh, they may be infrequent, but it's just to pull ideas and work alongside how we can make this engine oil more efficiently. So that's next Tuesday, seven o'clock. And all parish giving scheme invited by Richard Jones to join in that slot. But I just um, mention this to you as an item to note. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, is there any further other business? Um, uh, if not, I'm going to close the meeting, um, noting that the date of the next gathering is on the 14th of July, 2021. Uh, venue and method of having the meeting to be confirmed, but we may well be able to do this uh, with everybody present. And I think it would be good if we did, because um, Zoom is wonderful. And it's terrific to see so many people that I noticed there's only 42 now, but we were at 45. So we've obviously bored three into submission. <laughs> <laughs> problems like me and dropped off. Um, thank you very much. Before the next meeting, could I ask you, please, please, please to raise this at your PCCs and to make people realize that the Deanery Synod is something where decisions are going to be made soon. And the more people that can come and add to that decision-making process, really the better. It's, it's exciting. I think it's very exciting. I think that with lots of positive thinking, we can make this into a real opportunity as well as, as, well as anything else. The next gathering, of course, that the new Rural Dean will be present, whoever that might be. And, um, we very much look forward to it. In closing, I'd like to thank the Archdeacon for coming and helping us. Um, as I said before, in his busy schedule, if any of you are on the Facebook, there is a page called the Archdeacon of Hereford's Prayer Station. And Derek puts on there a small homily or sermon every single day of the week. And I read it every single day of the week, and it is absolutely brilliant. It takes about five minutes to read it. It's not short. 
uh, but it's really well funded with um, plenty of reference to the scriptures. And I, I would thoroughly recommend it to anybody. Um, it, I find it um, incredibly inspiring myself. So thank you publicly, Derek, for doing that. And anybody who hasn't heard of it, Facebook, the Archdeacon of Hereford's Prayer Station, I recommend it. Thank you all very much for attending, and uh, we look forward to seeing you all again on the 14th of July. I th think might be the Bastille Day. Good night. <laughs>